Now we're going to look into residuals analysis as a Minitab function. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to analyze what's actually happening based on the output of Minitab and what is happening in the residuals based on the standardized residual analysis that comes in Minitab. If we change that residual analysis and store the data, can we learn something more? So that's going to be the challenge that we have. What can we learn from what we observe? And also, what can we have learned from what we haven't been able to observe? So if we take a look at this, we have a data file set up here. So it's, it's a simple one. It's output and input. Okay. So we're going to go to stat, regression analysis, and a fitted line plot. So this is the, the way that you would want to analyze this. And so we see that the response is output. So we double click on that. And then it's input. Okay. Now I'm going to break my rule because I just want to show you the linear analysis. Okay. So we come to graphs, and now I'm going to plot the four in one graph, which is the residuals analysis. And uh, I'm going to uh, take a look under options, and I'm going to do both the confidence interval and the uh, prediction interval. Okay. And so we click OK. And then we click OK again. So we get the output. Now notice the first thing that we see is the residuals plot. So the idea that we see from this residuals plot is that there are four graphs on here. So the first is a normal probability plot. And so remember this normal probability plot is showing the data, the blue dots here, relative to the ideal probability function for a normal distribution, which is that red line. And we see that basically in here it's, it's pretty much normal. There's a couple of excursions on the outside. But then we take a look at the residuals versus the fit to the data line. And here we see there looks like there sort of is a pattern here. Okay. And then we take a look at the histogram, and this data should also be normal. Now, why should data be normal in residuals? Well, the idea is that if we've explained all of the variation, any variation that's left over should be in a distribution Gaussian. In other words, it's just pure random data. And so random data is called white noise, and white noise has a normal distribution. So here we see that there's, again, some shape to this. Okay, so it looks like sort of a long tail. It's peaked a little bit to the left. And here we see the res residuals versus the order of the data. So here we see how much data there is over the whole sum. Here's the amount of variation between the expected value and the predicted value. And here we see there's one or so that are pretty far. But in general, it looks like this. Okay. Now, we minimize this, and we're going to come over and take a look at the fitted line plot. Okay. And so as we, we, we blow this up and take a look at it in size, we say, okay, here is the linear regression, and here's the R squared. Uh-oh, we're only explaining 5.4%. Oh, there's a problem here. And so See, look at this. There's that shape that we saw before. It's kind of like a big smile. <laughs> it's not linear. Okay, and so we see there is a pattern above and below. And we also see that there is this uh, circumstance where the prediction intervals, I mean the confidence intervals, are actually pretty tight. They're centered here in the middle. Okay, so this is the measurement error that we see in the distribution. But then they spread out as we get further away. And here are the prediction intervals for where we would expect data to be. So we see this certainly is not a very good prediction. So again, we'll minimize this. And let's take a look at what we see when we take a look in terms of the uh, actual data plots that came out of Minitab in the session window. So here we see there's my equation. So there's the y-intercept. There's the slope of the line. And so there's the R squared uh, data we have, R squared adjusted. And we see, ah, oh, it was actually statistically significant. Okay. So it tells us that the, it's the regression line is statistically significant. But we take a look at this, and I just help wondering, can't we do something better? So let's take a look at the residuals in a different way. So now I'm going to edit this last dialog box. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to storage, and I'm going to store the residuals. Okay. Now what this is going to do is it will calculate the amount of information that the difference between each observation is from that normal distribution curve. And so we say, okay, if it was a really good fit, 
what is the difference? Okay, so here we get the same information, so I'll just minimize those two. But what we have now is Minitab has stored the residuals. So I actually can do some different analysis. So instead of just doing the probability plot that was in the uh, uh, residuals analysis, so here's the residuals plot. So instead of doing this probability plot that we see here, let's take a look and do graph and we'll do a probability plot like this, okay? And so we'll take a look at the single probability plot and we'll plot this. Now we see the data has, has this resi or residuals, okay? And um, we will we'll just plot and click OK and see what happens. So now what do we see? Now what we've got is we've got the confidence interval, the 95% confidence interval, but what we see is we've got some data outside the confidence interval. So as we blow this up, we say, okay, here is the p-value. So it's not less, it's, it's greater than 0 0.05. So it says the data is essentially normal, okay? But I take a look, I've got at the ends of the distribution something happening, and they're both on the same side of the curve. So that gives me some, some saying something is happening in the distribution, okay? So let's minimize this. And now let's take a look at a graphical summary. So we can go stat, basic statistics, graphical summary. And we'll take a look at residuals. As we take a look at residuals, now we can see that the mean and the standard deviation are drifting away a little bit, okay? And that the mean is to the right, and we start seeing that's the effect of this data coming out here. It's pulling the mean away from the median. And, and we start seeing that there is some difference, so it looks a little curious, okay? And now let's take a look at one more. And this is the idea of the uh, individual's control chart. And what does it have to tell us about the data? So we go to stat, control charts, control charts for individuals, and the individual's chart, and we plot residuals. And we click OK. And what we see is, as we expand this, we see we have one data point that is more than three standard deviations. This is excessive variation at a greater level than expected, okay? And we see that we have another one that's pretty close, and this is only within 99 data points. Now, the interesting thing is, remember if we talk about um, uh, false alerts, we would expect to only have one within 400 data points. So, that's not so bad, okay? But again, is there something we could do better? Now, it says that I'm not terribly comfortable with this data, okay? That maybe there's something else we should do. Now, remember I told you when we did a regression analysis that what we should always do is do regression analysis, like the fitted line plot, but we should always select cubic first, okay? And why is that? Well, let's take a look at the data. Okay, so we get the same residuals plots, okay. Uh, the, the, the data changed a little bit the way it was being shown to us, though, didn't it? But here we see, now, wait a minute, 62% R squared adjusted. Okay, what do we see? Evidently, there's curvature in the process. So again, we come back here, we take a look at this sequential analysis of the variance, and we see, yeah, the linear was statistically significant at 0.02, but the quadratic is 0 0.000. And the, the cubic actually is 0 0.432. So it says that cubic, even though it looks good, it's, it's not explaining that much new variation beyond what was in the quadratic. So again, let's edit the last dialog box, and now we understand this should be the quadratic. Okay, so this function is actually the best fit to the data. Okay, and as we take a look at this, this is the fitted line plot for this. And as I take a look at this uh, residuals for output, we see the residuals for output, really, it's changed in terms of residuals versus fits of the data. Residuals versus order have changed and so forth. So what we start seeing is the residuals analysis will change as a function of the mathematical 
uh, distribution that we're using to fit the data, okay? And so as we're looking at this now, I'm gonna minimize some of these charts that we don't need to have so we can see this a little bit more clearly. This gives us the best result. Now, if we notice in here, if I want to take a look at this, notice that this is really linear within a range, okay? So if I cut the data out and say I don't use anything below minus 1.75 and plus 1.75, I actually will have a linear function. So one of the things we might want to do is as we're doing our exploratory data analysis, try to find out what happens beyond the usable boundaries of control. And the re residuals analysis can help us to understand, is there something very unusual? If we go to all the way take a look at the full function analysis with the regression in the cubic plot, we can also see that there's a difference. Anytime we start seeing patterns in the residuals, what that means is that there is a hint that there is some other, either a factor or a different way of fitting the data that would be helpful. Now, how could we improve this data? Well, one thing we could do is say, is this a random plot out here these two data points at the limits. Was that measurement error? Because our measurement system doesn't work out there. It was only one data source. So if I took more data at this minus three and the plus two levels, I might start seeing that this is spreading out and maybe the data is actually down here and that was just an outlier or a measurement error. And I might see the same here because in this function here, that could actually be just the same as what we saw over here, but we haven't seen anything this high up. So is that one data point good or bad? Well, we don't want to get rid of it because it might actually be a good data point telling us that there's something else happening down there. So what we want to do is try to find out what is going on. So using exploratory data analysis, the next thing I'd want to do is find out what's really happening on that data point and why is it driving this function into this big smile when maybe I want it to be more or less emotional in a flat line. Well. I think you get the idea. Residuals analysis can be a very interesting tool to tell us how much confidence we have in the conclusion. When the R squared adjusted is below 80% or 70%, it's very important we try to figure out is there more information about the performance of this output variable that we can gather from this data? Or is there other things that need to be considered in the data set? Now sometimes we will get a observed data that's actually behaving normally. Then all of these residual tests don't show up. They don't tell us anything because it's performing exactly the way it would occur. However, if it has some shape in it, if it has some regularity or some pattern in repetitive performance, these residuals tests will probably give us a good indication there's something else out there and we need to take a look at it. So again, remember, we have to understand the physical process first, the factors that go into it, understand the statistical analysis of that, and then try to marry up what are those things that could be performing and creating a difference that we can detect, but we don't necessarily see it in the factors we've included in our statistical model for analysis. So I hope that you'll find this site of sort of analysis of residuals helpful in terms of being able to probe and understand what sort of things haven't we been able to see yet but we might if we just change our perspective and analyze the data in a different way. So happy hunting in your data.